Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My brothers and sisters, the last few weeks we've been speaking about the massacre that is occurring, the genocide that is happening in Palestine. The crimes that are being committed against our brothers and sisters who were driven out of their homes in 1948. They were driven out, so many of them were killed, so many of them were exiled. Those who left were told you're never allowed to come back and so much more has happened. And yet, over time, the aggressor, the occupier, happened to con the world into believing that that land is actually theirs because of a scripture. Yet you and I know that these people are nowhere connected to this particular land. And the reason I say this is the honorable Jewish people who know the truth are the ones who actually say this land is not ours. There are so many of those across the world who are saying this land is actually not ours. So unfortunately, the voices have been silenced online. If you try to say anything that depicts the truth, you are blocked. So it becomes more and more difficult to find out what the truth is. Recently, even Wikipedia has always been compromised, but recently it's even worse. You try and say the truth of something, it is immediately deleted and blocked and the false narrative is being pushed and this is something that is crazy. But today I want to speak about something a little bit different, although I started this way because it is the topic we will always speak about by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The issue is Allah does not need you and I in order to grant a certain population victory. Allah does not need anyone. The victory of the Palestinians shall happen at the hands of the Palestinians themselves. Even if nations do not come to their aid, trust me, Allah will fulfill his promise by granting them victory. If not today, then tomorrow. This is the closest they ever were to victory because the people whom the occupier brought, conning them that this is our land and occupying the land, many of them did not know the truth because in their schools, they were actually not taught it or they were taught a totally different narrative. Why would there be an entire population of people who want to fight back if there was nothing to fight back for? They are so super determined because it is their land. The same thing happened all over the world where colonizers went in and the same people had colonized the entire population of so many different countries at times for centuries. What happened? They all won at some point. They all won. The occupier had to give up at some point. You and I know even in this country, the occupier had to give up at some point when he saw that, you know what, we're getting nowhere. We're actually dying in our thousands. So the, the, the general masses are not fools when they realize that we are living in the, in the only place that is unsafe for us. They will go back to where they came from. May Allah Almighty grant victory to the Palestinians. Indeed, it's something we always have stood for and we shall stand for. And at the same time, it's interesting to note, as I said, that even if the nations, for whatever reason, are unable to come to the assistance of a population, it doesn't mean that Allah's help will not be with them. They will be granted victory without them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. If Allah has used you to do good to anyone, let me talk of a poor person you might see on the street here around or anyone else. If Allah has used you to do good, thank Allah, because Allah chooses whose wealth he wants in which cause. This you need to understand. Allah chooses whose wealth he wants in which cause. At times we get someone making a big pledge. They never come through with the pledge. Do you know why? Allah doesn't want that money in that cause. He wants it perhaps in another cause or he doesn't want it in any meaningful cause. He wants it to be wasted, whatever, because of how it was earned or because of the arrogance of the individual. When someone is arrogant, Allah doesn't take their money. No matter what, Allah doesn't take their effort. Allah doesn't use them to serve a good cause. He only uses them to make trouble, to cause trouble, to promote trouble and to be part of that trouble. May Allah protect us. Realize this. So, Normally, when something bad happens to us, we're taught, obviously, turn to Allah, engage in istighfar, seek Allah's forgiveness and so on, which is right. But you have to also look at whether or not you paid your zakah. A very interesting point. If you paid it, did you pay it properly? Number one. And there's two more points. Did you pay it properly? Yes, I did. 
Did you brag about anything you did? Answer should be no. If you bragged about something you did, the, the reward is nullified. It's nullified. It's gone. Secondly, did you abuse or belittle someone because of what you did? If the answer is yes, again, the reward is nullified. Hence, you suffer. You suffer the consequences when you bragged or you abused because you were the giving hand. Not realizing Allah is actually the giving hand. Allah showed you a cause, you gave. But then you bragged. So now what happens, this is all from a verse of the Quran where Allah tells you about your charities. Allah says, Oh, you who believe, do not nullify your charities by bragging about them, boasting, showing off, reminding someone, I gave, I gave, I gave, I gave, and so on. And secondly, other, or by abuse, belittlement. You think someone is low. Actually, they may be higher than you in the eyes of Allah. The only thing sometimes certain people have is money. They've got nothing else. So if that is the case, we need to realize we shouldn't be from among them. You need to have great character, good conduct, humbleness, humility. Don't ever let someone hear as we say that you gave. No, it's okay. It's okay. I gave. It's an honor. It's quiet. It's silent. It's gone. I don't want to hear about it. And it's there. Secondly, don't ever belittle someone. Who are you? I'm the one who raised you. I'm the one who gave you. I'm the one who this. I'm the one who that. Because that also Allah does not like at all. Allah doesn't like it. You give, you give. The true charity is that which is given by the right hand in a way that the left hand doesn't even know about it. Subhanallah. Now, we have an issue where there is one instance where you're allowed to show people what you did without bragging and without boasting or abusing. Which particular situation is that? When by showing them, you will either be encouraging others to give or you will confirm that you gave on behalf of others. For example, if you gave me something and said, look, I'd like you to do X, Y and Z with it. Without bragging or boasting, if I took a picture or a photo or a video and sent it to you to say, brother, the job has been done. What have I done? Have I done wrong? No, nothing wrong. Nothing wrong. I took photos. I took videos, I sent it to you or to my donors or to the donors of whatever charity it was. That's not wrong for as long as there is no bragging, no boasting and no considering someone else small and little the fact that we gave them. No, I just want to know done. Yes, done. Alhamdulillah. Thank you so much, my brother. And there we go. Sometimes even if the person trusts you, it's good to just give them something to say, you know what? The job has been done. Jazakallah khair. You encourage them to give more transparency. So that's one particular condition when you want someone to know, listen, Alhamdulillah, it was done. Number two is, in fact, the first point is supposed to have been when you encourage others. So, for example, I show you, you know, my brother, mashallah, we, we actually got 1000 tents for the refugees and it was done. I'm not telling you because I want to boast or brag because I know you have the capacity to do 2000. So your friend circle someone you know, someone who respects you, when they hear you did a thousand, they say, brother, how can I do it? Am I right? People come to you and say, hey, put my name in. I'd like to do also. Which means I showed them not because I was bragging or boasting. I showed them because I was encouraging them to give. And this is what goes back to the hadith of the Prophet wasallam, where when he was collecting for a certain battle, then the Sahaba radiallahu anhum came and publicly gave, publicly gave. There was no man and there was no other. There was no bragging about it and there was no hurt and abuse and belittlement of others. So Allah Almighty says, If you are going to make your charities open and apparent, and you're going to show them with the conditions that I mentioned just now that either to encourage someone or to confirm delivery, then Allah says, it's okay, it's fine, it's acceptable. That's what the Quran says. But Allah still says, if you're going to hide it and give it to the poor or the needy, whatever cause there is, then it's better for you. Still, it's better. 
May Allah Almighty grant us humbleness. You see why we have to always keep on reminding each other, myself and yourselves about these things because shaitan creeps in with all of us. Mashallah, we do good. Mashallah, we pray. Mashallah, we actually give. We, we are charitable. But sometimes shaitan creeps up and makes you feel that you know what? I did better and I am the upper. I am the bigger. Don't feel that. That's from shaitan. That was the crime of the devil initially against Adam alayhi salam. He said, Ana khayru minhu. You know, he said, I'm better than him. And that, that statement resulted in his being, in him being cursed. Shaitan was cursed because he said, I am better than him. And that resulted in him not obeying the command of Allah to worship Allah by prostrating. Subhanallah. May Allah protect us. We should protect ourselves from haughtiness, from showing off and always search for good causes and be a part of it. A lot of the times, the true causes, you have to search for them. They may not come to your door knocking. You have to search for them. It happens. Look, there's a lot of people doing a lot of good work. Be a part of it, even if it means a small amount, because it is a seed. Say, for example, I gave $100 to a cause, just 100 some people might not even afford that hundred. So let's say $10. Okay. I gave $10 to a cause. Just 10. I gave $10 to a cause. It's as good as a seed. That's what the Quran says. You just planted it and it's being watered. What will it be watered by? Well, I can explain it's watered by goodness, closeness to Allah, worshipping Allah and so on. So if you continue to do good, you have not harmed, you have not bragged, you have not abused, you have not belittled and you pray and you're close to Allah, you're watering the seed, the seed grows. It grows into what? A plant. The plant has fruit or it brings about other seeds. You know that. And it grows more and more. Before you know it, there will be 700 to 7,000 to 70,000 to 700,000, depending on what Allah wants, of other seeds that have actually been sown. And so much more has grown because of the seed that you initially planted of just $10. Just $10. But because it came with humbleness, humility and goodness, Allah allowed it to grow. When I die, you die. That's the only time we will get to see what happened with our charities. That's the only time. I cannot know right now. I cannot know any time between now and my death. Maybe Allah might give us a few signs, but shaitan comes all the time and makes you feel you are somebody. You're a big person. You're a giver. You're a wealthy guy. You're doing good. You're doing good. You start patting your own self on your, on your back and you start thinking I'm doing this and doing that. Remember, Allah did not need you and I in order to fulfill any cause. May Allah Almighty grant us the ability to consider ourselves fortunate to give. So if ever you've given anyone and you've then made them feel small because you gave them, the reward is nullified. La tubutilu sadaqatikum, you will, not, you will not have a reward for that. The reward is gone with your words. Be careful. Similarly, if you gave, you boasted and you bragged about it, some, the same thing. The reward is gone. The sadaqah is batil. Batil means it's, it's falsified, it's nullified, it's over. Now, as big as that, just by our mouths. So one day the Prophet ﷺ was speaking to the companions and he told them, he said, control your tongues. Control what? Your tongues. Wa'ad ibn Jabal radiallahu anhu, he says, O oh, Messenger wasallam, will we be held accountable for what we've said when we haven't acted on it? You see, if I say, I'll beat you up, does it mean that I'm already accountable for beating the person up when I didn't act on it, I just said it? You see, does it make sense what I'm saying? So the Prophet sallallahu looked at him and said, Thaki letzka ummuka ya Mu'ad. What do you think, O Mu'ad? You know, it's an Arabic phrase that is expressing astonishment or amazement to say, what are you talking about, man? Do the people or will the people of hellfire be, will the people of hellfire actually have their heads drag on the ground in hellfire only because of their tongues? Will they be there for any other reason besides their tongues? It will only be the tongue. That's the reason why you go to hell. Because of your tongue. So watch your tongue. So if this hadith that is a powerful narration of the Prophet ﷺ is a warning about what we say and let to clarify it, if you told someone I'll beat you up and you did not beat them up, that's a different example because you won't be held accountable for the beating because you didn't do it, but you held accountable for the threat because you're threatening. See, 
you held accountable for the abuse because you're abusing. May Allah Almighty grant us protection. So when we say things, it's a huge, it's a huge one. Be careful what you say. And the last thing I want to say today is that when you talk about others behind their backs, say good things, don't say bad things. When you talk behind someone's back, say good things. And if you really are the one who has been wronged, I am the one who was wronged. I'm allowed to say what bad happened to me to be able to protect others. I say, you know, this brother came to me. He stole my money. He did this, did that's not backbiting. Why? I'm the first party. I'm the first party. If you're the first party, you're allowed to talk in order to warn people, in order to uh, perhaps complain, in order to make a report to authorities. You're allowed to talk. You can't go to the police station and say something happened, but I'm not allowed to say it because I'll be backbiting my brother in Islam. And the cop will look at you and say, we'll jail you. You're wasting out. So if something happened to you directly, you're allowed to talk about it. Allah says, La jahra min al -qawl illa man dhulim. Allah doesn't like you to say bad things from your mouth unless if you have been wrong, you're the first party, not the second one. I'm not narrating a tale. You know what happened to that guy and those guys? That's a tale. That's backbiting. First party. I'm allowed to say, hey, listen, this is what happened to me. I was robbed. If someone asks you for a reference about someone else, you've got to say, do me a favor, go talk to that guy. Do you know why? That guy, something happened between him and him, he's allowed to talk about it. Then they come to you and you say, you know what, it happened to me. Yes, correct. This man stole my money. This man did this and that. So that is an exception. But besides that, say good things about others. On the day of judgment, you won't regret. You won't regret. Today on social media, we just click idiot. Have you seen that? One word and we, and we press send. That one word could be the tipping word for Jannah and Jahannam on the day of Qiyamah. Wallahi. And that's why I'm here to say, don't underestimate your reactions. You called a guy who's close to Allah an idiot and you clicked it and there were a thousand or a million people who saw it and people laughed about it. You don't know what you did to a friend of Allah. And Allah says, Man li faqad bil harbi. Whoever has harmed a friend of mine, I announce war against him. Allahu Akbar. That's why I say, be careful. Let's be careful, all of us. May Allah grant me the consciousness of what I say, what I type, what I do on social media, and all of us, and the way we interact with posts. And I said, when we give charities, we don't need to announce it. So that would mean, don't think people have done nothing about something, because they may have done more than you can dream of, but they haven't announced it. You see? May Allah Almighty grant us goodness. Once again, we pray for our brothers and sisters in Palestine. In fact, every day, at every time of the day, at every prayer, the entire ummah should be praying, not just for the Palestinians, but for all those who have been wronged and oppressed across the globe, because it is our cause. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness.